All right. Welcome back. I am Richard Hines, your host and dog training expert on everything dog training. Puppy training, obedience training, aggressive dogs, protection training, service dog training, tricks, anything you can think of in dog training. <laughs> so, today's subject, I've had a lot of this over the years, so I decided today to take this subject and explain how to walk two dogs at the same time. It's been a big problem for many people for years and years and years. I get emails on this all the time. How do you do it? How do you get two dogs to walk perfectly together and not cause chaos? So here is how you do it. First, your dog puppy must have an excellent perfect heel. So, if you have two or more dogs, individually, they must heal phenomenally. So, if you want to know how to heal your dog perfectly, this is the video that I teach how to walk puppies and dogs perfectly in a heel position. So that is first before you can go to a two or more dog system. So that video will teach you everything you know of how to get one-on-one -on -one perfect healing. So. As a rule, when you're going to start this, I always take the weakest individual of the dogs and I put them on the inside. They will be the one that stays against the leg. Why? The weakest dogs are most comfortable in the middle, right? So when you stick another dog on the outside of them, they prefer to be in the middle of you and the other dog for comfort reasons, for safety reasons. 
So it makes things much easier because if this dog is content, the inside dog on the leg, and we have a more confident, steady dog that isn't rattled by life and worried and insecure, they're just fine being on the outside with no issues, no problems, and they are not trying to fight for that inside position all the time and desperately to be vulnerable on the outside. Okay, so this makes things much easier if you do this by temperament, not even by size, right? I try to do it by temperament and sometimes if it's not that bad and there's not a big difference between the two, I might put the big one inside, the small one outside, I might change it up, it doesn't, then it doesn't matter however I feel comfortable with that. But, as a rule, the weaker dog goes inside and the stronger temperament dog, more balanced, goes on the outside. So, your inside dog is going to be the gauge for your outside dog, okay? So, if the inside dog is healing perfectly, meaning their shoulder is perfectly even with your leg and there's no veering in or around your front at all, okay, we, and they have to be pretty close to you, and this is basics of good healing, okay? Your dog, your inside dog should be pretty tight. They're completely aware of us at all times. That's why it's so important that a dog is pretty tight. Not leaning into you, we don't want that, but pretty close on you that I can feel them a little bit. Okay? So that inside dog should have that type of healing. The outside dog is going to ideally in the end they should be even right looking like a sled team a team of horses right sled dogs almost but tight close to each other right, that it looks like one unit of them walking together, shoulder to shoulder, perfectly, heads in the same position, forward, with no leaning, the outside dog curving its head in, crowding out the inside dog, which makes now the whole thing start to fall apart. So that is the ideal position in the end that we want from both dogs. And again, inside dog, it all starts there of their perfect position. Now, on the outside dog, we are going to have some work generally. It, it's 99% of the time, this never goes perfectly, right, when you start this. You're going to get the outside dog not understanding, right, how to hold the inside dog. And that, that that's the game. They have no idea that they're supposed to go shoulder to shoulder with that dog and walk in sync to the other dog now because they've been walking on your leg. So they are going to be confused and not know what their position really is or supposed to be because never doing it before. Using the other dog as a gauge. So what happens? As you start, like everybody has happened to them, the outside dog starts cutting in front, cutting out, blocking off, trying to get in between. They come behind the inside dog, going around the back now, and trying to cut in the middle and get to the leg because this is what they've known one-on-one. -on -one. So it becomes a fiasco in the beginning when you start to work two dogs together. Now go, uh, all right, that's gonna happen a lot in the beginning. 
I'll leave him alone. Right, let him. Now there, right? And that was because you fed her. All right, watch him. Throw him with his collar around her. And you put your hand out, right? Right, you was too late. So you would have done it on. There. Now, keep in mind, every client's nightmare is going to be that the first five minutes. <laughs> We're going to get crossovers. So we're going to go to the other side. He's going to fight inside. Good. All right. Stop her. Uh -huh. Good boy. Now, right, so this would be now I work on the outside dog with a line. And I pop him out, I pop him out, I pop him out. With a prong collar. Uh, prong collar, ideally. Outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why does he keep doing Yeah, that? yeah, but that's normal, right? Because this is what your clients are going to go through. So normally your clients would do this for a few days with leashes on. And then they're free off leashes in third day. So how do we prevent this and fix this and make this work beautifully synchronized as a team? Simple, right? We, two leashes, preferably on your outside dog because the outside dog is generally the one that's going to need most help and correcting. So. I put a little bit generally of a, of a prong collar on the outside dog just for a little help of guidance, not to correct, not to correct them hard, not to, but it helps them with a gentle guiding to stay off and out. Okay, so hand position, so it's two leashes. It's gonna be like puppeteering, I call it, right? <laughs> So my left hand is going to have the leash of the outside dog and my hand is going to go up and over holding that line but loosely. No tight holding to restrain the dog or try to keep them in that position because that will keep them from learning. It has to be loose okay, to give them a few inches of leeway to try to make a move. If you try to hold tight and hold them in position, you will never be able to fix the problem in anything dog training. You are keeping them from experimenting. So if they can't experiment and then feel a little bit of consequence or a little bit of negativity for moving in that direction, then they will never learn how to perform it without you. Okay? So it's very important you keep loose control. The inside dog, I have my right hand. So left outside, right inside, two, three feet up about. Okay? And as we start walking, it's generally the outside dog I'm going to have to worry about again. So I know for sure that going forward forging is going to happen. Trying to pull in in front of the inside dog or going to the back. And it's going to be all of the above generally when you start this with dogs. You're going to get a mixture of all these things and the dog trying to experiment with different positions and trying to get into the inside through all different angles in the beginning. So as we start, if they start to go forward, I just give a little bit of corrections backwards as I keep going forward. If they start to pull their head in to try to cut the inside dog off, I take my hand and go outward to pop them off a little bit to keep them straight so that they can't cut off now it's going to be this 
okay? So forward, it's a jerk, jerk backwards. If they're gonna cut in, it's outward. A little bit out, jab, jab, jab. Not big corrections, right? It's little tiny jabs. Just to get them to go whoop, 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 okay? Right, without any real consequence or negativity, it's just okay, not that way. So that's not an option. Passing the inside dog forward is not an option. Now how about going out the back? So when I cut the fronts off, I know the back is gonna come. So now, if they try to pull backwards, usually they're gonna pull back and try to get out the rear. So now I hold my line forward and jab, jab, and I don't let them get even a foot going backwards before I stop them with those corrections. Okay? And he needs to be against her, and his shoulder needs to be even with hers all the time. Inside is left, outside is right. Inside is right. Now she's is she passing, all right? So you can't do those turns with two dogs. See what just happened? Yeah. Cannot do those turns with two dogs. So it has to be very big, wide turns with two. Oh, you can do turns, but that's to be wider. Yeah. And she's the priority right now. Just pull them out. All right, in motion, in motion. Let's drag them out, around, all right, faster. So the faster you go, the more they'll stay. Drag him out while you walk. And he's got to learn he's always on the outside. Now he drags a little bit, go a little faster and pull him forward. Good boy. And he stays equal with her. And then when you get out to the street, make a wide rounded turn. All right, make sure he doesn't cross behind when that happens. Yep, walk and fix it, because everything in motion is easier. I know, it's just like my arm's in a really awkward, it's like back there where I have like no strength. And this is very easy. If your arm's back here. Yeah, just shorten your line a little bit. Shorten Max's line a little bit. And then just put it out, just shorten it, but put it out. All right, and then loosen up on him. Now a little faster, because you're losing him. Good. Okay, now go slow. Slow, let loose. Slow, slow, to a stop. Good, and you pet both right there, right? Good boy, good girl. Just walk. Mm -hmm. Then move off the grass line a little bit. And tap, 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 tap. And now slow up. Slow. Good. Really slow. Go to a stop. Perfect. And you pet him. Good. Very good. Now the prerequisite is that they knew heel. Exactly. Their own. Right. You couldn't take two brand new green dogs and do this. You'd have to get them to heel. They have to be in good at their heel one-on-one. -on -one. So the, the, the turns are wider than, the, than if it was just Yeah, you can't dog. do it. Two wide turns like that to fix them. He's going to cross over there. He's going to be in here. So what are the... There we go. Good. Uh, wait. Slow. Slow, slow, you go to stop. And it's very quick, if you have good skill, this will take you one session, right? To get a good flow of them learning how to do this together. It's not hard to do, it's just knowing all the things that are gonna happen, how to cut those off, and anticipate these problems are gonna happen to you when you start this. Now, let's say the inside dog, right? 
common as well, this could happen. Mo the moment you put the other dog with them now in healing, that now they're going to start healing together, it starts to amp dogs up that now they're going to feed on the energy of the other dog of the house. And now that they're together, now there's this when they heal one-on-one -on -one perfectly. All of a sudden now they're starting to forge forward because of the energy of the other dog with them starting to pull them mentally and them challenging for who's going to be faster and, and, right, and beat the other one and be ahead. So if this happens to you, the inside dog, very simply, jab, 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 was to make them know, keep that shoulder to the leg. And just because the other dog is here with you doesn't mean that your heel that I taught you changes. You must heal exactly the same as I taught you one-on-one, -on -one, even though I added a second dog to this doesn't change how we heal or your positioning or your mentality so they must keep themselves in check steady thoughtful thinking about where their position is all the time in healing and keeping them perfectly in sync with the owner okay and all those things we talked about with the second dog so once we have those two working perfectly and that's the understanding everything goes easy okay and you at least I would say for the most most people it's gonna take you a good two to three days several sessions a day of getting them that this is a habit now I'm the dog that's always on the outside and I'm the dog that's always on the inside and every time we go walk now together uh, it's not that I can ever get to the inside and I will ever go to the outside. They have to always from now on walk exactly in that position that we taught them from day one. There cannot be flip-flopping right during a session ever in life anymore I cannot allow ever the inside dog to switch to the out or the out to switch to the in because now things become chaos, okay? And it's not a choice, right? Once you teach them that they will always be the outside and this one will always be the inside, things are easy for the dog. They understand never to try to switch and change and get chaotic no need they will not be allowed so once they have the rhythm of that after two three days piece of cake when all our my clients my own dogs we start walking them now even without leashes they put themselves in the proper positions the outside dog doesn't try to fight for the inside anymore they put themselves out they know their positioning so it becomes a coordinated habit now things are easy, perfect, beautiful, right? We've created a way of perfect healing and the dogs are fluent now on how to walk together and stay as a team without any mental chaos and switching and any of that kind of crazy stuff that can go on. So just keep in mind because it's normal for people to think well if this dog wants inside and this one wants out they allow dogs to flip-flop right the moment you start that session you decide who's going to be who and that's it for now on and they have to stay like that and if i want to add a third dog it just works the same right The first two know their thing, they know how to work with each other, and adding a third dog is very simple, right? Now I just put a leash 
on the third one and I don't need on the other two generally and I just start moving them around and same thing I did with the second dog no cutting into the other two no forging no pushing too hard in and no coming around the back and it's the same exact thing so once you get two dogs to work together three four no big deal not hard to do just knowing technique so that is how you walk two or more dogs together perfectly and again this has been whew, I get so many emails on this subject that I thought I'd bring it out and I'm gonna start doing that with a lot of the videos now on things that have been asked a lot over the years that I just haven't gotten to so that is how you walk two dogs or more hope you enjoyed I am Richard Hines your dog training expert and I will see you on the next video